Bestal has an answer. Can I have a చెప్పేస్తా <laughs> good evening students so today we are going to discuss i think we have to start second pu syllabus right so let us uh, start at solutions let us start with the uh, solutions chapter so we are start we are dealing with second pu syllabus now so in solutions there are two parts in the first part concentration terms in the first part the questions may come from concentration terms these concentration terms what are they physical methods and chemical methods physical methods and chemical methods so these uh, physical and chemical methods already we discussed in uh, some basic concepts of chemistry first pu topic so in that physical methods how many we have weight by weight percentage weight by volume percentage volume by volume percentage and uh, parts per million so already we discuss i am not going to repeat similarly in chemical methods also we discussed in the chapter regarding molarity molality normality and mole fraction just go through those topics once again then next part in this chapter is about uh, colligative properties colligative properties now what are colligative properties right properties which depend on properties which depend on number of 
solute particles present in solution present in solution so properties which depend on number of solute particles present in a solution so that is what we call colligative properties what we can say colligative properties did you understand so this is about colligative properties next is about these colligative properties are inversely proportional to molar mass of solute molecular mass of solute colligative properties are inversely proportional to molar mass of solute then first colligative properties relative lowering of vapor pressure okay so this is uh, termed as rlvp we know that relative lowering of vapor pressure is p not minus ps by p not so this relative lowering of vapor pressure is explained by raoult's law what is this raoult's law relative lowering of vapor pressure of a solution is equal to mole fraction of solute what is rlvp p not minus ps by p not is equal to number of moles of solute by number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent this you can write as ns by number of moles of solute by number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent so n not is number of moles of mm -hmm. solvent number of moles of solvent okay so this is about uh, raoult's law next second colligative property elevation elevation of boiling point elevation of a boiling point what is this elevation of boiling point sir so let us consider elevation of boiling point now in this is represented by delta tv so delta tv is equal to delta tv is equal to tb minus t not b that means boiling point of solution what is tb boiling point of solution t not b is boiling point of pure solvent boiling point of uh, pure solvent so this is about uh, tb minus t not b that is boiling point of solution minus boiling point of uh, pure solvent so this is about uh, elevation of boiling point then delta tb is directly proportional to molality delta tb is directly proportional to de molality or delta tb is equal to kb into molality so what is kb ebullioscopic uh, constant ebullioscopic uh, constant or molal elevation constant okay then third factor depression in freezing point so this is represented by delta tf depression in freezing point is represented by delta tf so delta tf is given by t not f minus tf this is 
boiling point of pure solvent. This is boiling point of solution. Done. Then delta Tf is proportional to molality. Delta Tf is equal to Kf into molality. What is Kf? Cryoscopic constant. Cryoscopic constant. Or molal depression constant. Or it is also known as molal depression constant. Cryoscopic constant or molar depression constant. So this is delta T. Mm -hmm. Then last uh, point. Fourth one is actual osmotic pressure. Before going to that osmotic pressure, let us see what is uh, osmosis. What is osmosis? Let us consider solute and solvent. Solute and solvent are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. So let us consider this is a, a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane. Okay. Now this is a solution and this side you have solvent. Now the spontaneous inflow, the spontaneous inflow of solvent molecules into the solution. That means spontaneously solvent molecules flow into the solution side through the semi-permeable mm -hmm. membrane. Then this is called, this phenomenon is called osmosis, is what we call osmosis. Then let us apply some pressure on solution. Apply some pressure on the solution. Then what will happen? The solvent molecules cannot flow into the solution. That means this inflow of solvent molecule is restricted here. So that means we cannot have inflow of solvent molecules into the solution. When by applying certain pressure. That is what we call osmotic pressure. What is osmotic pressure? Pressure required, pressure required to stop the inflow of solvent molecules to stop the inflow of solvent into solution through semi-permeable membrane through a semi-permeable membrane. So this is what we call osmotic pressure. What is osmotic pressure? Mm -hmm. Pressure required to stop the inflow of solvent into solution through semi-permeable membrane. So this is what we call osmotic pressure. Then what is this osmosis? What is osmosis? The inflow of solvent into solution. So that is what we call osmosis. But the pressure required to stop this inflow of solvent molecules into the solution, that is what we call mm -hmm. semi-permeable membrane. That is what we call semi-permeable membrane. Understood? Then, mm 
reverse osmosis here only i am writing reverse osmosis so this osmotic pressure is represented by phi so i have small mathematical derivation that i will explain after this reverse osmosis what is reverse osmosis if the pressure required to stop the inflow of uh, solvent molecules this pressure here if you are applying pressure more than osmotic pressure if pressure is applied which is more than osmotic pressure then what will happen here also in solution also what you will have solute to plus uh, solvent now these solvent molecules from solution they will start to flow in opposite direction like this will start flowing in opposite direction that means which is opposite to osmosis osmosis is solvent molecules are flowing into the solution now from solution solvent molecules are flowing into the solvent side this is what we call reverse osmosis when it will take place when pressure more than osmotic pressure is applied then you will observe reverse process of osmosis that is known as reverse osmosis is that clear so this is about osmosis and reverse osmosis let us go back to the osmotic pressure now okay. what is osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is equal to cst or in some books it will be given crt so c is concentration of the solution t is as you know absolute temperature nothing but absolute temperature and what is r sir rrs both are same gas constant universal gas constant so this is about the uh, osmotic pressure last topic in this chapter that is a uh, abnormal molar mass what is abnormal molar mass let us consider if we have acetic acid if it is dissolved in water acetic acid dissociates into ch3 co minus and uh, h plus so here what will happen dissociation whereas if acetic acid is dissolved in benzene now we are changing solvent here in previous case solvent is water now here the solvent is uh, benzene then acetic acid undergoes dimerization Acetic acid undergoes dimerization. That means two molecules will dimerize to give a single molecule, right? Now, in case of dissociation, here molar mass of CH3COH is actually sixty. But acetic acid, if it undergoes dissociation, it is dissociating into two species. So, experimentally, you will get less than sixty. Because it is dissociated into CH3CO minus and H plus, whereas in the second case, actually molar mass of uh, acetic acid is sixty, but due to this dimerization, both the uh, two molecules are existing as a single molecule. So here you will get molar mass sixty-nine. Uh, here molar mass will be less than sixty. Uh, so in one case, that means in dissociation, you are getting a lesser molar mass. whereas in case of association this is a last case this is association here it will undergo association that means uh, you will get 120 more than actual molar mass so this is what we call abnormal molar mass this is what we call abnormal molar mass then
due to this abnormal molar mass, Van Toff introduced a factor. Van Toff introduced a factor known as Van Toff's factor that is represented by I. So I is equal to number of moles of particles, that means solute, after dissociation or association divided by number of moles of particles before dissociation or association. So this is how you calculate Van Dorff's factor. What is that? Number of moles of particles after association or dissociation or number of moles of particles before dissociation or association. In this, we have two cases. Case one, for solutes which undergo dissociation That means that suppose an is there, it will undergo dissociation, it gives n a dissociated into n moles of a. Then initially, this is one unit, this is zero. After dissociation, because initially there will be no product that way, that is why n a is zero. After dissociation, let us let uh, alpha is degree of dissociation. Then uh, An becomes 1 minus alpha. Then Na becomes uh, N alpha. Okay. Now, what is I? Ventas factor. According to the formula, I is equal to number of moles of particles after dissociation. This is after dissociation. How many are there? 1 minus alpha plus n alpha by number of particles before dissociation. How many are there? 1. So I is equal to 1 minus, sorry. Okay, let us make it alpha common here. Alpha, you come in, uh, then uh, n minus 1. Then if you want to find out alpha, alpha is equal to, bring this one this side, what it will become? I minus 1 by n minus 1. So this is expression for the alpha. This is expression for the I. Okay, so this is about uh, solutes which undergo dissociation. Next, case two. Case two is uh, solutes which undergo association then as usual. N A undergoes association becomes A N. So here, which is uh, the process taking place, association. Then, as usual, you consider uh, initial. Initial, it will be one. Product will be zero. Then, after association. 1 minus alpha, here it will be alpha by n. Then proceed with formula, I is equal to number of moles of particles after association. After association, reactants and products are number of moles. 1 minus alpha plus alpha by n. 
by number of moles of particles uh, before association. This is before part, one plus zero, that is one. So I is equal to one, let's make it alpha common, one by N minus one. Then alpha is equal to I minus one by one by N minus, uh, so this is expression for alpha, and this is expression for I. This is a second case for solutes which undergo association. Already we completed solutes which undergo dissociation, right? So these are some important concepts in a solutions chapter, right? So now let us move to questions now. So we have one more hour. So in this one hour, we'll go for questions. So which are, Then, sir. So, shall we move to questions uh, now? Mm. Okay, then. Let us see some questions. First question. Which of the following is dependent on temperature? Uh, Independent. Which other following is independent on temperature. So independent on temperature means uh, which do not uh, depend on temperature. So which is temperature free concentration term, molarity, mole fraction, weight percentage, and lastly, molality. So this is theory question, right? So which is uh, independent of temperature, molality. So molality is independent of temperature. That is, it is considered as a more standard uh, expression for uh, concentration. Okay. Next question. What is the mole fraction of solute? What is mole fraction of a solute in a one molar aqueous solution? One molar aqueous solution. That a one point seven seven zero. B zero point zero three five four C zero point zero one double seven D zero point one seven seven. So this is about mole fraction of solute in one molar aqueous solution. So mole fraction of solute formula in terms of molality. It is shortcut method is molality by molality plus fifty five point five five. So what is molality? 1 by 1 plus 55.55. So what you will get? 1 by 56.55, right? So maybe this value is 0 0.1, 0 0.0177, right? This is your answer.
So this is a mole fractional solute, a shortcut formula. Mole fractional solute is given by, if molality is given, if molality is given, then you can use this formula directly. So mole fractional solute is equal to molality by molality plus 55.55. Done. Then, third question. Which are the following compounds? Can be used as antifreeze in automobile radiators. Automobile radiators. Yeah. Options are methyl alcohol, glycol. Nitrophenol, and lastly, ethyl alcohol. So, answer is glycol. So, actually, this is ethylene glycol. So, when ethylene glycol is added to water, mm -hmm. which acts as antifreeze, it decreases mm -hmm. uh, freezing point of the solution. It decreases freezing point of the solution. So that is why ethylene glycol is mixed with water, which acts as antifreeze in automobile radiators. Because in automobile radiators, we'll use water. So in certain conditions, that means if temperature is very low, then the water present in car radiators, uh, it will get a freeze in that radiator. So it is uh, difficult to run the car. So what we have to do? We have to avoid that freezing of water. How we can avoid freezing of water? By adding a, a non-volatile solute. So which will decrease freezing point of water. So that is uh, based on depression in freezing point. So it is based on depression in uh, freezing point. Next, 2.5 liters of 1 molar NaOH solution is mixed with another 3 liters of 0 0.5 molar NaOH solution. Then find out molarity of resultant solution. Molarity of resultant solution. So here we have two different solutions. One is Two point five liters of one molar NaOH solution and three liters of zero point five molar NaOH solution. Now these two solutions are mixed together, right? So for uh, molarity of a mixture of same solute, what is formula? M one V one plus M two V two by V one plus uh, V two. Let us suppose this is M1V1, case 1. What is molarity? 1. Volume is 2.5. Plus here, molarity, 0 0.5. Volume is 3 liters. By total volume, 2.5 liters plus 3 liters. So 1 into 2.5, 2.5. 3 into 0.5, that is 1.5. Divided by 2.5 plus 3. 5.5. So what is here? 2.5 plus 1.5. 4 by 5.5. So we can do it uh, 40 by 55. So you check out uh, what is that 40 by 55? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The 
we get point uh, something around 7, 0 0.7, isn't it? Because uh, 5, 7s are 35, 350. So it will be around uh, 0 0.7. Right, so that is your answer. Next. How many grams of methanol? Next question. How many grams of methanol should be added to should be added to water to prepare one fifty ML solution? of 2 molar methanol CH3 OH, right? So how many grams of methanol should be added to water to prepare 150 ml solution of 2 molar methanol? So let us see. So we need to find out, uh, so how many grams of methanol to be added? So let us proceed with it. What is molarity formula? Weight by gram molecular weight into 1000 by volume of solution in ml. Molarity is given 2 molar. Weight of uh, solute. Do we know? We don't know. X. But we need to find out. Methyl alcohol uh, gram molecular weight. The means molar mass. Carbon 12. 4 hydrogens, 4 plus 16. What is that? 16 plus 4, 20, 32. So it is 32. So molecular weight of methanol is 32 into 1000 by water to prepare uh, what is volume of solution? 150. 150. 0, 0 gets cancelled. X equal to 2 into 32 by into 15 by 100. Okay. To 15 is 30. 30 into 32 by 100. So 30 into 32. Thirty two is uh, sixty, thirty three is ninety plus six, ninety six. What are you getting? Three thirty two is three two is three, ninety six, nine sixty, right? By hundred. What do you get? Nine sixty by hundred. This nine point. Uh, 6 grams of methanol should be added. 9.6 grams of uh, methanol should be added. Right? Next question.
सिक्स्थ क्वेश्चन एट हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस the vapor pressure of a solution the vapor pressure of a solution of 6.5 grams of a solute in 100 grams of water is 732 millimeters if kb is 0.52 then the boiling point of the solution will be boiling point of the solution will be this is the question let us proceed with the question now this is 6.5 grams of solute and 100 grams 100 grams of uh, solvent And this is uh, vapor pressure 732 mm of solution then we need to find out boiling point of the solution so how you will get boiling point delta tb is equal to kb into molality right so if you can find out molality then it is easy to find out uh, delta tb from delta tb you can find out what is the uh, boiling point of the solution what is delta tb tb minus uh, t not b so if you find delta tb Tb minus T not B boiling point of water pure water that is hundred degrees Celsius. Then you will get boiling point of solution. So first you need to find out what is delta Tb value. What is uh, delta Tb, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to find out delta Tb, first you should know what is uh, molality. What is uh, molality of the solution? What is molality of the solution? There you can see. Weight of solute is given. Weight of solvent is given. Then you need to find out uh, so let us start. The upper pressure of the solution is given. That means RLVP is equal to mole fraction of uh, solute. What is RLVP? T naught minus P S by T naught. That is equal to number of moles of solute by number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent. And what is the upper pressure of pure solvent? T naught is the upper pressure of pure. Uh, Solvent P S is vapor pressure of uh, solution. Now let us substitute vapor pressure of pure solvent. That is seven sixty. So vapor pressure of pure water is seven sixty. If we, if it is not given, we know that value. Vapor pressure of uh, pure water is seven uh, sixty. Uh, so you can uh, underline that. Then. Uh, uh. No. Vapor pressure of solution is given seven thirty two. It is given in the problem by vapor pressure of pure solvent that is seven sixty. Now number of moles of solute. How you will get number of moles of solute? Weight by gram molecular weight. What is weight? Uh, weight of solute given there six point five. The gram molecular weight of solute we don't know by six point five by m yeah, plus. Six point five by m. Then molar mass of number of moles of water. Weight. Weight is uh, 
100 grams water by 80. So here if you calculate this, you will get a molar mass of solute. What you will get molar mass of solute. So that equation you need to solve it. Then here this number of moles. Try to solve them taking that value directly. Number of moles of uh, solute is 0 0.2046 moles. Then delta Tb is equal to Kb into molality, which is equal to Kb is given 0 0.52 into molality. Number of moles of solute by number of moles of solute 0 0.2046 by weight of solvent in grams. Weight of solvent in grams means 100 grams divided by 1000. Then it is uh, 1.06. So delta Tb is 1.06. What is delta Tb? Tb minus T naught B. So Tb minus boiling point of pure water, 100 degrees Celsius, which is 1.06. And boiling point of solution is 1.06 plus 100. Then what is it? What it will be? 1.06 plus 100. 101.06 1 degrees Celsius. So boiling point of water, that solution, not water, boiling point of the solution will become 101.06. Then, sir, next question. Seventh question. 200 ml of an aqueous uh, solution of a protein contains of a protein contains it's 1.26 grams 1.26 grams the osmotic pressure the osmotic pressure of the solution at uh, of this solution at 300 Kelvin is found to be is found to be 2.57 into 10 power minus 3 bar. The molar mass of <laughs> The molar mass of protein will be the molar mass of protein will be R value is given 0 0.083 liter bar mole inverse Kelvin inverse. Now we need to find out the uh, molar mass of uh, solute means molar mass of solute. What does that mean? Protein. So let us prove, uh, move to that uh, part. What is given here? Osmotic pressure is given. What is formula? Pi is equal to CRT. Pi is equal to what is concentration? Number of moles by volume. And pi V is equal to NRT. R pi V is equal to number of moles, weight by molar mass into RT. 
what we need actually molar mass of protein that means we need this capital letter e. so m is equal to w r t by pi into v so this is actual calculation that we need to calculate here so molar mass is equal to yeah now we'll proceed what is weight given 1.26 our value it is there 0.08 now temperature, where is temperature? 300 Kelvin. By osmotic pressure is given 2.57 into 10 power minus 3 into molar mass of protein. What is molar mass of protein? That is 0 0.2. That is 0 0.2. So this is about a molar mass of a solute. Molar mass of a solute. So, which is equal to, now we calculate all this, 1.26 into 0 0.083 into 300 by 2.57 into 10 power minus 3 into 0 0.2. That will be 61038 grams per mole. 61038 grams per mole. So, this is a molar mass of protein. This one different model. Next question. Question number eight. The vapor pressure of carbon tetrachloride the vapor pressure of carbon tetrachloride at 25 degrees Celsius is 143 mm Hg. If 0 0.5 grams of a non-volatile solute of a non-volatile of a non-volatile solute. Small molecular weight is given. Molecular weight is equal to 65 is dissolved in 100 grams CCL4. The vapor pressure of the solution will be the vapor pressure of the Solution will be options given are one ninety nine point three four mm Hg, one forty three point nine nine mm Hg, one forty one point four three mm Hg. 94.39 mm Hg. So how we can uh, proceed with this? So what is given? Paper pressure is 143 mm Hg. That means uh, pure solvent is given. This is P naught. Okay, use some other color here. This is P naught, vapor pressure of uh, pure solvent. P naught is given. Now, vapor pressure of solution, that is PS, we need to find out. Then, according to Rolls law, P naught minus PS by P naught is equal to mole fraction of uh, solute. Mole fraction of a solute. 
what is small fraction of solute is it given there so 0.5 grams of a non volatile solute molecular weight is given and dissolved in 100 grams of ccl4 then first find out mole fraction of solute here So that is uh, 0 0.5 by 65 divided by number of moles of solvent. Solvent is weight by gram molecular weight, CCL4. Mm -hmm. What is CCL4? 4 into 35.5. What is it, sir? 4 into What you are getting? CCL4. So here this is 4 into 35.5 is 142 plus carbon 12. What is carbon 12? That means it will be 154. So here are getting 154. So what you will get? Just find out. So we are getting zero point uh, zero one one. Is uh, Isn't it? Uh, okay, now here num number of moles of solute. This number of moles of solute here also will come right zero point five by. 6.5. If this also you have to add. So we just calculate one second. Just calculate one second. 0 0.5 by 6.5, 65 also calculate in numerator and denominator also. Both you can see. Let me know what you are getting there. Make it fast. Zero point zero one one five. Zero point zero one one five. Okay. So it is something around 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन वन सेवन जीरो जीरो पॉइंट वन वन सेवन सॉरी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन ओके नाउ यू सब्सटिट्यूट देर पी नॉट माइनस पी एस बाई पी नॉट सो वेपर प्रेशर ऑफ फ्यू सॉल्वेंट इज देर विथ यू व्हाट इज दैट पी नॉट व्हाट इज पी नॉट देर Vapor pressure of pure solvent 143 minus वट इज दट वैल्यू आर गेटिंग जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन वन सेवन सो वन फोर्टी थ्री मैनस पी एस इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन वन सेवन इन टू One forty-three. Find out. Sir, one forty-one point three two six nine. One forty. One forty one point three two six nine. One forty one point a. Three two sir. Okay okay. So here is near by value there. One forty one. Ah, option C sir. Option C. Yes sir. Remaining all got same value. So it is. Uh, is that one forty one point three two R? So therefore, P S is equal to one forty one point three two. So near by value is one forty one point four three. Okay. So this is how I have to find out the upper pressure of uh, solution. The upper pressure of uh, solution, right? Done. So this is uh, one more question. We'll proceed with one more question. Just uh, let us see one more question. Ninth question of the following. Zero point one zero molal, molal sir, small letter M. Aqueous solutions which one will exhibit the uh, which one will exhibit the largest freezing point. The largest freezing point depression options are KCl, C2, sorry C6, H12, O6, glucose or fructose. C, Al2, SO4 taken thrice. D. K two yes four four right so so what we need the largest freezing point uh, depression so what is the uh, formula for largest uh, or uh, freezing point depression delta T F is equal to if the given compounds are electrolytes you have to introduce Van der Waals factor also I into Kf into molality. Understood. So here you can see delta Tf and I. How they are related? 
delta Tf is directly proportional to Van Tauss factor. So this is our point here. Now, what is Van Tauss factor for uh, these uh, compounds? I is equal to KCl, K plus and Cl means how many? Two ions are formed. For C6, uh, H12O6, this is non-electrolyte. So for non-electrolytes, I is equal to one. For C6, H12O6. This is for uh, non-electrolytes. What are non-electrolytes which cannot be dissociated or associated? They are non-electrolytes. Next, uh, KAL4, KAL2, SO4, taken thrice. How it will dissociate? 2AL plus 3, and 3, SO4 minus 2. Total number of ions, 5. So this is I. Then K2SO4, last compound, K2SO4. 2K plus and SO4 minus 2. So here 2, here 1. Total 3. So I is equal to 3. So which is having here, it is directly proportional. Largest freezing point depression, largest delta Tf. So largest I value. In which is, uh, who is having largest I value here? So now it is clear. I is equal to 5 for Al2SO4 taken by. So this will be your answer. So this is how you should solve questions. Mm. Right? Let us see one more question. We proceed with one more question. Nine questions we completed. Tenth question. Zero point five molar aqueous solution. Of a weak acid. Hx is 20% ionized. If Kf for water is 1.86 Kelvin kz per mole, the lowering in Means decrease in freezing point of solution is so let us uh, consider. So this is weak acid Hx. How it will dissociate H plus and X minus, isn't it? Then ionization, that means initially, this is one, zero, zero. After dissociation, this one minus alpha, this will be alpha, this will be alpha then I is equal to number of moles of particles uh, after uh, after association or dissociation and here it is uh, one minus alpha plus alpha plus alpha before uh, dissociation one what is this alpha plus alpha minus alpha gets cancelled one plus alpha I is equal then I is equal to what is alpha 0 0.20 percent means 20 by 100 that is 0 0.2 it means 1 by 2 so we know our I values now we have I value So 
what we need a lowering of freezing point of solution that means delta tf we need delta tf is equal to i into kf into molality what is i we got 1.2 kf it is given 1.86 molality is given 0.5 so what we can write 1.6 into 1.86 1 by 2 0 0.5 is nothing but 1 by 2. So 2 in 1.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 into 1.86. Find out what is that value. That will be your answer. Mm -hmm. 1.116, sir. 1.116. So you'll round it up 1.12. Kelvin. So this is your answer. Uh, mm. so proceed for the next question. Which are the following salt? I don't know this question. Eleventh question. Which of the following salt has the same value as the same value of Bantoff factor? I as that of K3 FE C and 6. Options are sodium sulfate, aluminium nitrate, Al2 aluminium sulfate, and lastly sodium chloride. So you need to find out uh, which of these options have same Van Tauss factor as the top of this uh, K3, potassium ferricyanide. So first find out potassium ferricyanide Van Tauss factor. How it will dissociate 3K plus ions and this has a complex anion. Three minus. Total how many sir? Here three, here it is one. So, Venta factor is I is equal to 4. So, among those options, which one will have 4? Uh, that will be your answer. Let us consider B, aluminium nitrate. That is Al plus 3 plus 3 nitrate ions. So, total here 4, which is equal to I. So, here in this case also, Venta factor is 4 here. And this is also Venta factor 4. So aluminum nitrate will have the same value of Venta factor. Then mm. okay, we'll proceed with the next question then. Which of the following aqueous solution which are the following aqueous solution has minimum freezing point? What's the lowest freezing point? Options are 0 0.01 molar in ACL, 0 0.005 molar ethyl alcohol, 0 0.005 molar magnesium iodide, next 0 0.005 molar magnesium sulfate. Mm -hmm. Mm. 
So the question is, which of the following uh, aqueous solution has least, uh, is that uh, freezing point? Again, same delta Tf we need. Delta Tf is equal to I into Kf into molality. So molality is given Kf. Uh, Which one you will get? Anybody got answer? So here, you can see here, delta Tf and molality I. Kf is constant for all the solutions. So no need to worry about uh, Kf. Means delta Tf is directly proportional to I into molality. This is the case. Then how we can uh, how we can consider this I into molality? So case one, 0 0.01 molal NaCl, NaCl I value, Na plus Cl minus. That means how many ions? Two ions. So for uh, NaCl, how it will associate Na plus and Cl minus? So I is equal to two. So what we can find uh, here? Delta Tf is equal to 2 into molality 0 0.01, that is 0 0.02 for C2H5OH. C2H5OH. Ethyl alcohol. So ethyl alcohol is C2H5O minus and H plus. What you are getting here, I is equal to again 2 here. So, delta Tf is equal to 2 into 0 0.005, 0 0.01. Then, for MgI2, MgI2 dissociates into Mg plus 2 plus 2 I minus. So total uh, three, so I is equal to three, which is uh, delta Tf becomes 0 0.005 into three, that is 0 0.015. And lastly, for magnesium sulfate, how it will dissociate Mg plus two plus SO4 minus two. So I is equal to 2. Delta Tf is equal to 2 into 0 0.005. That is 0 0.01. So this is 0 0.01 here. Delta Tf. 0 0.01 for magnesium sulfate. Magnesium added 0 0.015. For ethyl alcohol 0 0.01 and for NaCl 0 0.02. So 
So he's having maximum delta TF ethyl alcohol. So conclusion here. Maximum change in uh, depression in freezing point means minimum uh, freezing point. So maximum delta TF is uh, present in NACL. So that will give you minimum freezing point. So answer is 0 0.01 molal uh, NACL. Okay. So this is about uh, questions, how you will get from solutions chapter, right? So tomorrow we'll meet with uh, a new chapter, mostly will start solid state. Okay, that's it for this, uh, this session. Meet you tomorrow once again. Good night, all of you. Thank you, sir.